Hey guys, this is Jeremy from the Deviatus Podcast, bringing you a do-it-yourself infrared lighting tutorial. I have an investigation coming up, and I just recently converted my IR, or my, my it's like a GoPro, uh, it's called an SJ Cam to IR by removing the IR filter, but I wanted to get some lighting for it. Before we begin, I have a list of supplies that I'm linking to. If you're viewing this on YouTube, in the description, you'll see a link to my website at deviatus.com where I have a list of the supplies, tools, and equipment that I've used in this tutorial. Um, and you'll also find some affiliate links. I want to be very upfront and say that I do get a commission off of some of these links if you choose to purchase through my site, but you don't have to. You can shop around. You may be able to find some cheaper prices, especially if you go on eBay, um, if you bid, or if you order from China, but you might be waiting three or four weeks for, for you know the supplies to come in. I did these for about uh, $20, uh, but depending on, like I said, the combination of uh, vendors you purchase from, you could probably get it down to 15 or so, depending on where you shop, or you could get it for about 25 if you uh, use the list that I have provided for you. You're also going to need the uh, IR conversion. I'm not going to recreate the wheel for that. I'm going to just link to a, another gentleman's YouTube video that uh, I use to convert my own camera. For supplies needed, you're going to need a plastic project box. I've listed the dimensions there. This is if you want to do the two uh, LED panel array. You're also going to need those two LED lamps. Uh, the ones that I got and the ones in this tutorial are 24 LED lights each for a total of 48 LED lights. You need two SPST mini toggle switches. I bought the 10 amp 125 volt versions. You're also going to need two 9 volt battery holder cases with wire leads. Now you can go a little cheaper and get those vinyl uh, covered leads, but I find that they kind of break easy and you don't want to necessarily have to be replacing those a lot. It'll require resoldering and everything. So no good. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to recommend the hard case. And then you need two 9-volt batteries, of course, and a hot shoe mount or a quarter-inch camera mount. You're also going to need some needle-nose pliers, a soldering iron, or I guess you can use glue, uh, the conductive glue. I'd prefer soldering iron. It's going to be quicker for you and much stronger bond. You need a 2-inch circular drill bit or hole saw. Uh, and a drill, of course. You also need a quarter inch drill bit, which isn't pictured here, but you'll need those for the toggle switches and the, and the camera mount. You need some tweezers, some wire strippers, a good Sharpie, and some super glue or hot glue gun. If you don't have one, you can use the other. Other items needed, of course, is the camera with the IR filter removed. Mine is an SJ4000, the non-Wi-Fi version. I went cheap because uh, I, I didn't know if I was going to ruin it by taking it apart, but it was actually a really easy tutorial, um, so I might upgrade in the near future. You also need a tripod and or camera mounting bracket, which are not pictured here. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is drill two inch holes, two two inch holes into the project box. Then you're going to need three holes that are quarter inch in size. Two of those holes are going to be in the short dimensions, and I put them right in the center. Those are going to be for your toggle switches. And then the other one's going to be in the middle, in the middle of one of the long axis uh, borders there. That's going to be for your camera mount. So eventually that hole that you, that you drill in the long portion there is going to be on the bottom. Use those needle nose pliers to strip out, uh, tear out some of those plastic shards that are hanging loose, and then sand until they're smooth. You want to get um, nice, good, smooth borders on there. Next, you're going to want to test your LED lights. Now, now my LED panels didn't come marked with positive or negative poles. So what I did was I loaded a 9-volt battery into one of those cases, and I just by hand tapped the red and black wires against uh, the poles that are sitting inside that white plastic there on the LED assembly. Now, 
if the lights don't come on, that means it's not oriented appropriately according to the poles. So once you find a, a configuration that allows the lights to turn on, what I did was I drew a little negative mark with a Sharpie next to the pole that had my black wire against it for the, the negative polarity. That's going to be important for later when you go to uh, wrap the wires around that pole and to solder. Next you want to remove the plastic away from the LED leads. Uh, you can do that with the needle nose pliers, just pull gently. And what I did was kind of slightly bend those leads away from one another with the needle nose pliers. You don't want to be too rough because they're, they're very small, but if you can just slightly bend them away, you'll, you'll give yourself a little more room for soldering later. This next picture here, I've got it aligned, uh, all the wiring is aligned appropriately according to where they're going to be connected. So you want to cut that black wire in half, the, the long black wire that's coming from the 9 volt case. And, you know, give yourself a, a good little length of it. You want to strip a half inch of insulation off of each wire end. So both the black and red wires plus um, the little piece of 9 volt, or I'm sorry, the piece of black wiring that you just snipped off. So when you connect the wires, you want to start with the uh, long black wire coming from the 9 volt battery case. The end of that wire is going to go through the long pole of the switch. So the, the little poles have holes in them. You can put it right through the middle and then you can wrap that wiring around the pole. The next one you're going to connect is that short black wire that you just um, cut off. Take that short black wire and thread it through the little hole on the short pole of the switch and then wrap it around. Make sure the wires aren't touching. Then you're going to connect the black wire coming from the short pole that you just connected. The other end is going to go to the negative LED on, on the uh, little panel that you just marked with a sharpie. So wrap that around the pole and move on to the next one. Next we'll do the red wire coming from the 9 volt battery case. That's going to go to the other pole that you did not wrap um, on the LED assembly. Again, make sure the wires don't touch. If they touch, you're not going to have good conductivity. The lights may not work. Now it's just time to solder the joints in place. Grab your soldering iron, heat it up, and do your thing there. Now I am no expert um, electrician. This is the first soldering project I've done. But I did this with my son over the course of a couple hours on Saturday, and it was a great father-son bonding experience. So he, he had a great time helping me out by taking some of these pictures while I was soldering let him get his hands on some things too, and uh, you'll see him a little later in the video. Just make sure to solder all the joints together that you've already connected. Now that you've soldered everything together, this is what it should look like. You're going to want to test it. So take a 9 volt battery and insert it into the plastic case. Then get your um, IR camera set up so that you're you can basically see everything. You know, go, go ahead and switch the toggle switch on. And one thing I'll note that I was not aware of, and this could have saved me a lot of time, is I couldn't figure out at first why it wasn't turning on when I turned the switch on. Well, you'll see my index finger covering a light sensor on the right picture there. Um, it's, it works like a night light. So if there's room light on, those IR lights aren't going to turn on. You have to block all the light coming into that sensor before the lights will illuminate. So make sure to do that. If, you're, if you find yourself uh, struggling, maybe you're thinking, oh, I didn't solder it properly, uh, check that first because I spent a lot of time trying to troubleshoot that. And it was just by mistake that I figured that out. And that wasn't on any other tutorial video that I saw. So I hope that helps.
Once you've done a successful test, make sure to screw in all of your uh, toggle switches and then tighten the nuts on the outside. You can probably use Loctite or super glue if you want to have a more firm um, holding in place there. I just tightened it with a wrench. Next, you want to super glue your LEDs in place. I kind of put a thin bead around the periphery uh, of the front of that LED panel and then put them face down into the back of the box there. You can kind of see on the right how they're recessed in there. After your super glue's dried, go ahead and attach the camera mount of choice. Uh, you want to have this done before you put the backing on, of course. And this step's optional. Um, you can glue the 9 volt battery case onto the inside of the project box lid. Now just, if, if you're going to do this, make sure that you leave room for the toggle switch mechanisms that will be right up next to those. And you're going to also want to have room for both of those 9 volt battery cases. So maybe do a little arranging before you actually fix the glue to it. Finally, you want to close your uh, project box case with all four screws and you're mounted. You're ready to go. It's time to go test. So on the left, you can kind of see what my tripod looked like. I, I think I had a dual flash mount, so is what it's called. Um, you can see that on the affiliate links page. But it's got my SJ cam there in the protective case, plus the lighting assembly. Uh, both switches are in the off position, so you can kind of turn those. Um, I kind of liked having the off position down, and then they'll just flip up when I want, the, want to turn them on, as you can see in the right picture. And the right picture was done in low light, so you can just kind of see the pink hue coming off of the LEDs there. Next, you just want to test it. So my son and I went to one of our bathrooms in low light condition. Um, and, you know, you can see both of us standing there. <laughs> You're going to see one of the lights come on here in a second. There it goes. And the second light should pop on soon. And you can see how uh, really well lit the bathroom is. And we had a great time doing this. Again, it probably took us a couple hours. Uh, but again, father-son bonding time, it was, it was pretty cool. He liked the chance to see it work and, and get it on video, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If, if, uh, if this has helped you, then please subscribe, rate, and review, and you can find me at deviatus.com.